Hello my friend and welcome to my Shelf Faisal Azib. I hope that you are well. Let's now take a function over one step further at calling one function from inside another function. And this is something that we do all the time in JavaScript. But I have seen many beginners struggle to understand this logic. And so I created a specific video just for this topic. And to illustrate function calling another function, let's go back to our initial code, food processor. Where is it? Food processor. So, where is our food processor? This one. Oops. Yeah. Okay. So, I will just copy this function and put it here. Oops. What I have done? Sorry. Copy. Good. So remember that we have this function which was like a fruit processor which received a certain number of apples and certain number of orange. Okay? Let's get rid of this command here. Not need it. And then based on this uh, that is basically produced and returned juice to us. But now in this exam example let's consider that the fruit processor can only make juice with the smaller fruit pieces. And so before making the juice, the fruit processor now needs another machine that first cuts the fruit that we give it and multiple smaller uh, in, uh, in multiple smaller pieces. So I hope that's not an example too uh, silly, but I think it makes sense actually to understand the, pod, the, uh, the point that I am trying to make. So let's actually start by writing that machine. So basically, that function that uh, cuts fruit into multiple pieces. So let's say function, and I call him cut fruit in pieces, like this. Okay? And this function will receive, of course, a fruit, a type of fruit. And all this function we do is to return the fruit cut in four pieces. So basically, what it will do, it return, oops, no, curly braces, sorry, curly braces. It return fruit in multiple pieces, so I mean by multiply by four okay so if i have uh, one apple i have uh, four pieces here is what does it mean for example so that's our machine that cuts the fruit in pieces and now here in the fruit processor itself we received apples and orange and then we are going to use our newly created machine to cut the received apples and orange in two pieces and so let's do that so we start by calling a fruit pieces here fruit cut sorry cut fruit pieces I can use auto completion but I will write it no problem and what I put uh, in this uh, function I will put the first parameter that I have received in fruit processor. So it is apples. Okay? And the result of calling this function, we then capture into a variable called, for example, apple pieces. Number of pieces of the apple that I have received. Okay? And now let's do the same for the orange. So I just copy past this line. I will do the same thing for the orange. Of course, I will change the name to orange pieces here. Orange. And here I will give him uh, in uh, argument orange. Okay. Good. And so, for the first time now, we called one function inside of another function. So, if we know we call our fruit, but of course, I remember, I will put this one, 
before this one, it's very important, remember, I have talked about this before, but of course I will talk in detail in another video. Now I will call fruit processor, for example, with two uh, apples and three orange, for example. Huh? Then this will call the fruit processor function, we then in turn we call the good, fr uh, good fruit pieces function and actually twice for apple and orange. So let's now actually analyze how the data flows between this function. So down here we are calling the fruit processor function with the argument uh, 2 and 3. And as you already know, this will then replace the upper parameter in the function with the number 2 and on the orange parameter on the function with the number 3. Okay? So that should be nothing new at this point, right? We are simply replacing the parameter repl uh, replace orders with the actual value 2 and 3. Good. And now let's analyze what's going to happen with this apple value. And it's the same thing for orange. Huh? I will just do it for apple, but the same thing for orange. So apple right now holds the number 2. And that value 2 will then be used to call the cut pieces function. Right? Or cut fruit pieces. Now, as we call cut fruit pieces, this 2 is actually the argument for the cut fruit pieces function. And it will basically replace the fruit parameter. So the fruit placeholder. Okay? So now, fruit here in this cut fruit, uh, fruit uh, pieces function is also 2. And uh, I hope that this arrow here makes the data flow quite obvious. Then, inside this function, of course, the fruit is then also 2, which uh, will get multiplied by 4. Good. And so the result here is going to be 8. Okay? And so that's the value that we then store into the apple uh, pieces variable. Okay? And from there, we will then build this juice string that, uh, that we have down here. So, take a moment and analyze exactly how the data flows from the function to another because I know that it can be a little bit confusing, especially calling the good fruit pieces function here without a tangible number. So we are cut calling, uh, calling cut fruit, cut, sorry, cut fruit pieces here, not with an actual number, and then, then we wrote ourselves like two or three, but really with the argument that we received into fruit processors. So that can be a little bit confusing, so take a second to understand exactly what happens here. Okay? I come back to our code. And, the, and what happens here with Apple variable will, of course, happen exactly the same with orange, as I said, and so I am not going into uh, that part here, because that will be too confusing having all this arrow in the, in the slide. But of course, you can analyze that for yourself and see exactly what is going to happen. But now, Let's uh, come back to our uh, code and see this actually works in our, in our practice. And so now we need to change this uh, Jewish uh, string. So in the function that we just saw, it was already complete, but let's now write it out ourselves. So here we used to have apples, but now we want to use the apple pieces value. Okay. So let's do it. Juice with apple pieces here. Okay, piece of apples and orange pieces. Piece 
of all of them, like this. And we have changed our string. So here we call the fruit processor function, then just as I explained in the slide. And then let's simply log the result to the console. I haven't do it here. Console.log without uh, capturing the in the variable. And so again, this was because the result of calling uh, this function fruit processor will become this string here that we return from the function. And so then console log works with uh, that string. So let's try that. Indeed, we get a juice with eight pieces uh, of apples, which is four times two here, and then 12 pieces of orange, which is three times four. And so that's worked just as expected. Good. Good, 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 good. So I think that was really great example to illustrate the mechanics of one function calling the other. But now again, you may ask the following question. Why not simply multiply both of the input value by 4 and call it a day? So we could, we could uh, do that, of course, there is no problem. We can say upper pieces equal uh, apples times 4 and orange pieces here is orange times 4 as well, no problem. Well, but we did it this way for well multiple reasons. First. The point that I am making here is that it's very common for one function to call another function. So just like we did here. Then second, this is also a very good example to illustrate the don't repeat yourself principle that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so the dry principle. For example, imagine that suddenly the cutting uh, machine will cut in uh, three pieces, not four. Okay? Then, if we didn't have to separate cut fruit pieces function, we would have to change the code in multiple places. And this is not problem, of course, with two lines of code. But if we need to cut like 10 fruit into pieces, then we would have to change that in all, all, all the places. And that will simply be annoying and it could also be a source of bugs, so of coding mistakes. And so it's a lot better to put that functionality into its own function. So, if the fruit was now only cut in three pieces, all you have to do is to change it in the cut three pieces function, and that's it. Then this change, uh, the, this uh, change uh, to. Uh, to six, about uh, apples, as you can see, six pieces here and nine pieces of orange. Okay, it's directly. So I hope that made sense to you and that you can start internalization or internalizing this kind of logic. Of course, with time uh, and practice, you will exactly know when you should create your own function and when you have to multiply function or when you have to uh, multiple function one calling another. Good. One small congratulation for all the progress that you are making here. Working through this uh, video about function can be a lot of work, I know. And it can be sometimes a little bit confusing. So you're making great progress. Very great progress. And it's great to see that you are already at this point of the course. So again, Function, it's a very, very important topic in JavaScript. And so, in the next video, inshallah, we are going to take a couple of minutes to review the fundamental principle about function that we just uh, learned here. So, stay tuned for that one. And I see you, inshallah, in the next video about this. Take uh, care of us, brothers and sisters. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to receive the new video, inshallah. Take care of us again. I tell you goodbye. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh.